Hello everyone, this is Eugene Find It speaking. Yes, if you have noticed, I have just returned back to Australia and finally going to get back to this segment on anime reviews. Now, I have made several other review videos on this segment of how you didn't find it and you can check my description below. Well, I guess I should get this started and get this done before my semester starts once more. So for now, I present to you an anime series that really is something worth mentioning because it caught my attention from the very first episode. So here it is, Code Yes. Roll it! Ah, Code Geass. When I first saw this, I was like, ha ha, very funny. Japan has been conquered by another nation. Wait, if I remember history correctly, I believe it was the other way around. Huh? Remember when some jerks decided to cause trouble and start invading other nations? I believe there wasn't any mercy shown to the invaded either, you psychotic piece of I'm just kidding. To tell the truth, as much as Japan has given a bad impression for me, I can't really hate it. Especially when you guys produce most of the technology I use. Not to mention anime series. So I guess I should say here that unlike some people, I personally don't believe in racism because every individual is different. That is why I hate it when people discriminate others because of race. Come on, you guys should know better than that. So in regards to the whole Japan inner conflict that I've had, I'm really just pissed at the dumbasses who start the chaos in the first place. But in any case, let's get back to the review. I've already given a general idea of the story, with Japan being one of the many countries being conquered by a new superpower named Britannia. We are then introduced to the main character of the series, Lelouch Lamperouche, who is about to enter a chess match and just freaking beats the opponent in minutes. Before and after that, there was a reported terrorist attack going on involving a truck carrying some stolen Britannian property that was reported to be poison gas. For some reason, Lelouch gets caught up in the mess because the motorcycle that he and his friend Rivos were riding was being caught up by the truck, which led to the truck crashing into a nearby warehouse. Feeling sorry for the truck drivers, Lelouch decides to go help the truck drivers after the truck crash. That's when things got a little messed up. In an old subway line, he meets up with his old friend, Suzaku, who has joined the Britannian army. They discovered that the stolen property was not poison gas, but a beautiful girl trapped in a capsule. Later, Lelouch was caught again, and it seemed as though all hope was lost for our supposed main character. But miraculously, the girl in the capsule survived a bullet to the head and made a contract with Lelouch that offered him with the power of Gias. And thus, this power in anime that was to be remembered for years to come was shown for the first time with all its glory. Code Geass is one of the few anime series with an insanely huge cast of characters. So I guess I'll just go through the main characters that make up the bulk of the series, and you can just go through the rest yourselves. There are four characters which I consider to be of utmost importance, with the first one being Lelouch of course. Lelouch is a character I truly admire because he is one of those characters who is passionate about bringing peace to the world. After obtaining the power of Gias, he decides to join forces with a group of Japanese activists to battle the Britannian Empire which he then named it the Black Knights, and by claiming his identity as Zero. I am Zero! Next up is Kurugi Suzaku, Lelouch's childhood friend, which I have mentioned joined the Britannian army. And ironically, he frequently ends up being the main obstacle preventing Lelouch from achieving his mission. Again? It's him again? Then there is the girl in the capsule, C2 or CC, or oh, I don't know how this works. Let's just call her C to the power of two. Nah, just kidding. Who made the contract with Lelouch and acts as a guide to him about the power of Gias, and occasionally saving his ass. Finally, there is Kellen Stadfeld, 
who is part of the Black Knights. Even though she doesn't play that big a role as the other three, she is important because of her backstories, leading to her great hatred towards Britannia. And let's not forget her skills because her presence is a huge determining factor in Lelouch achieving his goals. <laughs> And I'll also mention about the character designs because it is definitely one worth mentioning. Because I have not seen anything like it. The characters really have a unique design of being rather tall and skinny with rather long legs. Still, they are not oddly designed because the guys and girls can look pretty good looking. As a personal opinion, in contrast to the crowd favorite C2 and Callan being some of the prettiest girls in the anime series, the girl that first got my attention was Shirley Fennett. I'm not sure why, but I personally like girls which are a little shy as well as being pretty. Still, I'm not leaving those two out because all the girls in the series, to be honest, look Bye, hi. One important focus in this series that should be taken notice of are these giant robots that are called Nightmares. Now, if you know a lot of anime series, you'll know that this sort of uh, theme is not new in anime because they've appeared in other series, notably in Gundam and Neon Genesis Evangelion. But then the question remains that being a series that is based mainly on giant remote control robots, do I think the animation quality stands out from the rest? And I have to say no. I will admit that the animation is pretty good in focusing on important action scenes and face-to-face -face conversations, making them rather unforgettable. But in terms of overall animation, it doesn't give the impression that you should watch this show because of it. In fact, there are many rapid cutscenes that are shown especially during battles, making it hard to keep track of what's going on if you're not paying attention. So, what else does this series have to offer? If you have the opportunity to obtain an incredible power that can be used to battle an army, how would you use it? Well then, let this series show you the ropes. Lelouch is just the perfect owner of such a power because I was impressed by how quickly he was able to understand and use this power of Gias to his advantage. It is kind of sad sometimes when things don't always go as planned but this is a good aspect of the series because it points out that not even the protagonist wins all the time. My opinion of the series improves even more when I think about how easy it is to just avoid the influence of this power. Something like, I don't know, closing your eyes? Knowing the limits of Gias, Lelouch mastered it brilliantly to bring out its full potential and bring this power to fame. And it is very fortunate because not many anime series does this. I can't talk about an anime series without mentioning the songs. I mean, they have never failed to impress me, so what could possibly go wrong? Oh yeah, that. When I first heard this song, I was like, Oh my god, what the heck is this shit? This is like the worst anime song I've ever heard. And just to clarify things, I thought the song was so bad, I had to share my opinion. That's when I started the anime song countdowns, which you can check in my channel. But after a while, I realized that it is far from being the worst song, even though I still can't really put this song any higher. On the other end of the spectrum, there are some songs which I just find to be catchy as heaven. Even though I've placed these three songs in the countdown, I can't honestly pick out one from the other because they are each very interesting in their own way. Thanks to these songs and a few others, this series ends up overall having a really good set that is very enjoyable to listen to. After watching many series for so many years, I would normally prefer the sub over the dub because the actors do so much of a better job. But for once, I have to say that I would rather watch the English dub, mainly of one very important reason. Code Geass is really very English-centered. With so many names written in English, I want to hear them being pronounced the correct way. Greetings! I am Lelouch V. Britannia of the Royal Family. But I still have to admit, the Japanese cast did a better job at voice acting overall. 
Even so, there really isn't much difference because it is still the best dub, hands down, in anime I have heard yet. So, great job on both sides. Sometimes, the ending can really be the aspect that wins my heart. And yes, this is just the case for Code Geass. Now, before I move on, I strongly recommend those who have not completed the series to go to the description and skip to the next section if you are one who is very concerned about spoilers like myself, just so you can enjoy the series to the fullest. Near the end of the series, Lelouch has stepped up to the throne claiming to be the new ruler of Britannia using the title Lelouch v Britannia. At this point, he had become somewhat of a dictator and it seemed as though he had become a bad guy, and I sure was confused as hell. But at the end of it all, it was revealed to be all part of a plan to have himself killed in the hands of Suzaku disguised as Zero. And the reason for the plan just blew my mind. As planned, the hatred of the whole world is now focused directly upon me. And now the only thing that remains is to get rid of me and finally break the cycle of hatred. It might have been a crazy plan, but it was sure freaking brilliant. I have to say that Code Geass had the main theme of action at hand, but it does not leave out other components like comedy, romance, drama, and suspense. It does have its flaws, as I've mentioned for sometimes focusing on many angles, and there is the ultimate question of where this power of Geass really originated, as well as the many forms it can take in different owners. With the huge cast, it is hard to keep track of every character. Even to this day, I still don't get certain events that happen within the series involving minor characters. But even with all that unsolved, I can still look at the main story of Lelouch and his journey to obtaining peace and see how well written the story was. It was off to a quick start and things just escalated, sometimes getting really intense while other times you can just relax with casual episodes. Then of course, all of these chain of events led to the ending and created a masterpiece. And so once again, I'm also giving this series 9 out of 10 stars, as well as a secure spot in my top 10 favorite anime series of all time, for probably a very long time. I'm sure there wouldn't be a need for me to tell you that I would surely recommend this series to most people. With just 50 episodes in two seasons, it is definitely worth the time. But of course, if you're not one who likes to work your mind when you watch a show, then Code Geass is really not for you. Also, if you hate the sad depressing stuff, this is also not one for you. But hey, you aren't gonna get many chances like this. So really check it out. If you're looking for something similar, Hmm, let me see. I don't know about giant robots fighting each other, but as for something related to extraordinary power, maybe you can try Toaru Kagaku no Ryogan. It's not about bringing peace to the world, but more of bringing peace to their home city. It may not be as good as Code Gears, but it is definitely worth watching. And that's all the time I have for now, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Now I'm sorry that I've left this section out for so long because of me returning to Malaysia as what my parents insisted on, but at this point, my semester would have started. Still, I have some days off to work on stuff. I probably won't be posting as frequent as when the year-end break arrives, but I'll work something out. And I guess I'll leave it at that. It's great to be back, and do stay tuned to the next time of whatever I make. Until next time, bye!